As you'll probably be aware, the equipment we use on saxophone, specifically our mouthpiece and reed combination, can have a big impact on our tone, transforming it from a dark, rounded sound to an edgy, bright sound, or anything in between. But what I've found from my experience and from the many sax players I've spoken to over the years is that despite owning several mouthpieces, most players will simply end up using one for everything. In other words, if they have a pop gig on Friday, a big band gig on Saturday, and a jazz combo on Sunday, they're unlikely to be switching mouthpieces for every situation, despite the different tonal demands of these genres. That's because as sax players, we have an incredible amount of control over our tone just by making small changes to our embouchure. And it's possible to really dial up the brightness on the fly when we need to. So we can go from this to this. How did I do it? In this video, you'll find out. But first, if you're an intermediate level sax player looking to break out of the intermediate trap and take your jazz, blues, and R&B playing to the next level, check out my free masterclass on mastering your practice strategy. You'll get free PDFs with exercises, songs, and a pre-made routine, which you can adapt to your needs and time. You'll even get MP3 backing tracks and more to help you on your journey and start sounding like the sax player you want to be. To check it out, head on over to saxtuition.com forward slash watch. In order to play brighter on the saxophone without changing anything about our setup, we need to first understand one basic principle. Bright mouthpieces utilize smaller chambers and feature baffles that compress the air we blow into the mouthpiece into a fast moving jet. To visualize this, simply imagine putting your thumb on the end of a garden hose. With the same amount of water pressure, you can suddenly get the water to travel further and faster. This is the effect we're gonna be creating with our embouchure, and it's actually the tongue that will act as the baffle. We want our tongue high and wide in our mouth in order to channel the air up and over our tongue, narrowing the width of the airstream and increasing the velocity of the air. To get your tongue in the correct position, simply say the syllable E and notice how your tongue stretches out to gently touch the sides of your molars. These are your back teeth. And this is where your tongue will be anchored when you play the saxophone. Now, with your tongue in this position, I want you to blow air against your hand and I want you to see if you can direct that jet of air straight forward. You may need to actually subtly raise your tongue up in order to direct the air. <sighs> Without a mouthpiece in your mouth, you'll find that you won't be able to sustain that jet of air for very long. But don't worry, that's completely normal. Now you can start to see that we're doing half the job of a bright mouthpiece ourselves just by using our tongue to channel the air. But there's one more thing we need to do to really dial up that brightness, and that's to bring out our bottom jaw. So I want you to move your bottom jaw forward so that you have a very subtle underbite. It shouldn't be uncomfortable for you to hold this position. Now, if you already have a pronounced overbite naturally, you might just wanna bring out that bottom jaw to a point that's comfortable for you, just in line with your top teeth if possible. What this is actually doing is it's reclaiming a few precious millimeters of the reed, which will now be able to vibrate more freely and result in us just subtly dialing up the edginess of our sound. So keeping in mind our tongue position and this new jaw position, let's see what we can do. <laughs> Now for a quick Q&A. 
Well, yes, you can. In fact, many famous saxophone pedagogues like Joe Allard, who taught the likes of Michael Brecker, Bob Berg, Eddie Daniels, and many more, really emphasize the importance of keeping your tongue high and wide in your mouth as you play. This tongue position also helps you to articulate when you play as well. In simple terms, yes, but you want to be careful not to back off too much with your tongue and jaw, otherwise you may create other tonal problems for yourself. In general, I've found it far easier to add brightness than to take brightness away, if that makes sense. As you'll quickly find out, there is a limit to the amount of brightness we can add with our embouchure alone. If you want a really bright, piercing tone, you'll need to couple this technique with the likes of a Dukoff mouthpiece, a Jody Jazz Superjet, or something similar. Now, before I wrap up this video, I want to include a quick note. If you're still in the very early stages of playing, I would not be concerned with the brightness or darkness quality of your tone just yet. In fact, the best thing you could do is just to focus on your embouchure fundamentals. So if you want to recap, make sure to check out lesson one of the beginner series right here on YouTube, link below. For the rest of you watching, how'd you go? I'd love to hear what difference this made for you. Or if you have any other tips or questions you'd like to share, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks to all our amazing subscribers for supporting the Sax Tuition YouTube channel. Make sure to hit subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any more great saxophone content. And of course, I'll see you all again soon.